Hello friends. Before you get started on this grand adventure, perhaps you'd like to know why we at OST think you should learn assembly. Well, let's start with an easy one. The first thing is that unlike some skill sets such as network security, assembly language knowledge is relatively rare. And this means that when companies actually need someone who has this skill set, supply and demand dictates that the low supply is going to make this skill more valuable. Another reason is because assembly is essential to learning reverse engineering. Whether you're doing reverse engineering of malicious software as a malware analyst or benign software as a vulnerability hunter, in either case, it's going to be necessary to know this. But the thing is, even if you reverse engineer and find vulnerabilities in software, you won't necessarily be able to exploit those vulnerabilities unless you know assembly, because finding vulnerabilities is one skill set and exploiting them is another. Or perhaps you want to help make systems more secure. Knowledge of assembly is essential to digging down into the guts of the system to understand how it works so that you can understand how to make it work better and more securely. These days, it's definitely the case that new security mechanisms are deeply tied between hardware and software, and these will frequently take the form of new assembly instructions that have to be adopted by the authors of compilers, operating systems, or firmware. So personally, I frequently think of the different specializations and job classes that security engineers can increasingly take as sort of like job classes in a role-playing game. And I went and I tried to dig up the various job classes in something like Final Fantasy, the different colored mages, and I found that the particular mages were spread across a bunch of different video games, and so I couldn't find any consistency there. So instead, you'll have to forgive me if I speak in generalisms about magic colors when I talk about these particular job classes. So, for instance, you might be a white mage, a security architect who is using their healing powers in order to protect and heal systems when they become attacked. You may, might be something like a blue mage using the mirror or replication powers in order to reverse engineer software, ultimately learning the software just as well, if not better, as the regional engineers. You could be a green mage, such as uh, malware analysts who are frequently highly entangled in the bestiary that is malicious software on the internet today. Or you could, for instance, be a red mage with the aggressive power set, which is going after vulnerabilities and trying to attack software. Or finally, here we have an example of proper mix of Final Fantasy Black Mage and a Magic the Gathering Black Mage, frequently invoking the powers of necromancy or attacking the software and killing it and raising it back up in order to make it do what they want it to do. So, I mean, when I look at things this way, I think it's pretty freaking awesome the different types of skill sets you can learn when you know assembly language. Now, another reason why you might need to know it is because very frequently the top researchers will invoke assembly in their presentations or white papers, usually when they're trying to make some point about how exactly the system behaved in order to prove to you that, for instance, a vulnerability was there or whatnot. And so in order to become their peer, you need to be able to speak the same language as them. You need to understand what they're trying to say to you. So I did a quick skim across some talks from the last couple of years at one particular conference and found some examples of this. Now here my nepotism is showing because this is my wife's presentation from last year using ARM assembly in order to make the point about a particular integer underflow vulnerability which she had found in the ROM of a Bluetooth chip and how it was therefore exploitable. Here's an example of some 32-bit x86 assembly when someone was doing a retrospective on the various exploit chain mechanisms and how they could be filled back in for the Stuxnet vulnerability from a number of years ago. Here was some 64-bit Intel assembly about digging into the Apple Wi-Fi driver stack. Here was both ARM and Intel assembly when someone was talking about the mechanism that Windows uses to translate Intel binaries over to ARM executables on the fly. And then you might have something like this, the MIPS assembly used to attack a Wi-Fi router. And frequently you'll have researchers get into more obscure things, such as this custom assembly language infrequently found, but found inside of the Broadcom Wi-Fi Mac media access control physical hardware layer that it uses to receive and process packets. 
or this, for instance, which is ArcAssembly, as used in the Lenovo Embedded Controller, which has additional security features and functionality on Lenovo laptops. So those were just some quick examples of how researchers have tried to use assembly in order to make their point in various talks. And finally, if none of the rest of that convinced you of why you should learn assembly, hopefully this will. In order to be a proper hacker, you should be curious. You should want to understand how systems work and why. And very frequently, assembly language is essential to understanding exactly how software is behaving and why. And at the end of the day, understanding how the system works when you're a very curious person is extremely satisfying.